four, three, one. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Tom Alonzo. I'm the chair of the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Lunenburg. We are uh, meeting with the panel that we have on the stage today to go over the latest uh, developments in the COVID-19 uh, health crisis pandemic that we have in front of us. Uh, obviously, a lot has happened over the past week, and until now, we probably couldn't have kept everybody up to date with things changing as they are. We thought this was a good time to try to sum up everything that's happened, knowing full well that it is still a fluid situation and that things will continue to change, but we felt this was a good time to give an update to everyone. Um, I have on the stage with me, uh, from my left going all the way to the end, we have the town manager, Heather Lemieux. We have the school superintendent, Dr. Kate Burnham. We have police chief, Jim Marino. The Shoba Board of Health agent, Jim Gareffi, and the fire chief, Pat Sullivan. They will all be asked to give updates in their various departments and things that are going on in town. Uh, one of the things we'd like to say, first and foremost, is that there are some places to try to keep all this information as up to date as possible. Uh, a few of them, and there are many, but the, these are the ones probably the most vital to the town and the federal government. Uh, first one is mass.gov slash COVID-19. So that is the Massachusetts gov state government's update site for everything uh, health related and all closings, et cetera. For our town, lunenbergma.gov, if you go to news and announcements, we will keep as updated as we can as things change. Uh, when things change in slight variations, they may not be updated. We try to collect them so that we're not constantly updating and losing sight of the larger picture. On Facebook, there are four places. The town of Lunenburg has a Facebook page. The Lunenburg Fire Rescue has a page. Lunenburg Police has a page. And the Eagle House and the Council on Aging have a page. And then the school has their own independent website that they are keeping everybody up to date with things uh, there. We will also try to keep all closures and up-to-date information as part of the public access cable feed. So that'll be in rotation again as things change. We ask everybody as this information, we are all in uncharted areas with school closings around the country, around the world even. Uh, and we understand the inconveniences and all the frustrations and anxieties that people are having. We ask everybody first and foremost for their patience in, in handling this as best as we all can, uh, for consideration for everybody doing the work at every level and consideration for each other, whether it's in helping neighbors, whether it's not buying out whole shelves of food and things, you know, really think about the larger picture and that we all should take a moment in our own small microcosms in our neighborhood to think about those who need the most assistance. So with the Eagle House closing, we wanna make sure that we pay cl close attention to the seniors that may be homebound, uh, people who are infirm with illnesses other than COVID-19 who may need addressing. So keep those in mind and try to help neighbors. I know there are going to be town-wide uh, gathering of foods and like the food bank with the Lions Club, there'll be people helping out in local communities. I know the Salvation Army out of Fitchburg is, is doing a lot with the food assistance. So try to assist those people and, and give to those organizations. And then most important or equally important, just follow the guidelines. I know it's difficult to be homebound, but the guidelines to prevent the spread of, of the virus is of critical importance to everything, especially the critical nature of the healthcare system. So the whole point of all this from the beginning was not to overload the healthcare services. And we all can do that by just keeping the guidelines that were given in, in, and putting them in practice, you know, good hygiene, social distancing, and things of that nature. Don't go any place that has lots of people uh, if you can avoid it and minimize any contact just in general while this is going on. So with that, I'm like gonna hand it over to uh, the town manager, Heather Lemieux, and she will give her update uh, with uh, town departments, et cetera. Okay, 
Thank you. Since the governor declared a state of emergency on Tuesday, March 10th, our response has had to require informed, immediate decisions to take place with an adjusting landscape. On March 12th, I called a meeting with James Gareffi, our local health agent from Neshoba Associated Boards of Health, the fire chief, who is also our emergency management director, the police chief, and the superintendent to discuss our risk and our response to the coronavirus. Later that same day, I met with all the department heads to update them and discuss a plan for continuity of operations that would ensure we continue providing essential services and keep our local government functioning. Using information provided by our local health agent, we have updated the public to follow the Mass Department of Public Health and Center for Disease Control's guidelines by practicing good hygiene, increasing our sanitizing efforts, both by our cleaning company and employees sanitizing their workspaces as well. Our facilities director was asked to provide additional sanitizer and wipes to all our offices, and the cleaning company will be increasing their frequency of cleanings. On the evening of Thursday, March 12th, the governor issued an order that modifies the open meeting law so that all members of public bodies can participate remotely and provide an alternative source of public access. I am currently working closely with the IT director and public access to implement a solution that we can roll out to all boards, committees, commissions, and the public. On Friday, I was in constant contact with the school superintendent, each of us having conference calls with state and local officials, with my last conference call ending later Friday afternoon. We each drafted public messages what were, that were released simultaneously. This is a constantly evolving situation that requires us to adjust how we operate. I continue to ask for everyone's patience and understanding during this time, as we are committed to continuing to provide services to our residents and businesses at the same time as keeping our residents and staff safe. Here are a number of updates that will also be posted on the town website, town Facebook page, the townwide listserv, and sent to the Lunenburg Ledger. Closure of town facilities and schools and playgrounds. To follow the governor's orders of no public gatherings of more than 25 people, we are extending the closure of town facilities to the public until April 7th, and this coincides with the school closing dates. The superintendent will provide more information on this. Also effective immediately, all public, including school playgrounds in Lunenburg, will be closed to the public until April 7th. This includes Wallace Park, Kids Kingdom, Marshall Park, and school playgrounds. Board committee commission meetings. As mentioned, on March 12th, the governor issued an emergency order that suspends and modifies key portions of the open meeting law that allows for remote participation by all members of a board committee or commission, but we must provide an alternative means of public access so that the public can participate through telephone, internet, streaming, video conferencing, or other similar technical means and that allows the public in a full and fair opportunity to follow the public body's proceedings. The latest order issued last night by the governor that there will, shall be no public gatherings greater than 25 people has shifted our plans slightly in that the procedure we will now be rolling out will ensure that all participants are participating remotely. In order to adequately prepare staff, members of our public bodies, and inform residents how they can participate, all meetings scheduled for the week of March 16th have been canceled. I would also ask that boards and committees only meet to conduct essential business and delay meetings if possible to a future date. Senior Center updates. As with our other town facilities, the Eagle House will be closed to the public until April 7th, and this includes all activities at the Senior Center and off-site. The Meals on Wheels program is being extended to all Lunenburg residents age 60 or older who are self-isolating in their homes or homebound. Meals will be delivered to your door through Mock Elder Nutrition Services. This will be a temporary delivery until the end of March. Call the Eagle House at 978-582-4166, Monday through Friday between the hours of 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. to make arrangements. Meals on Wheels will continue as usual, and staff will be in the building to answer phone calls and make appointments. Van transportation service will continue to Lunenburg Crossing only, medical appointments, 
the pharmacy, and bank. There will be no service for shopping trips to Lemonster or Fitchburg or hairdressing appointments. Any questions can be directed to the Council on Aging Director, Sue Doherty, at 978-582-4166 or S. Doherty, D-O-H-E-R-T-Y, at lunenbergonline.com. Casella is still on their normal schedule of picking up trash and recycling. Any updates to that will be updated through the proper mediums. Information on town meeting and town elections. We are still operating as if the annual town meeting and annual town election will occur at their normal dates as we are awaiting special legislation from the state that will allow towns more flexibility. The exception to this is that per the governor's order on March 15th of no public gatherings more than 25 people, the town caucus is postponed until further notice. We will continue to operate under all other deadlines until the governor issues new orders pertaining to town meetings and elections. Today was the last day to submit warrant articles for the annual town meetings and there was a box outside the town offices that was installed by the facilities director. Any questions can be directed to the selectman's office at 978-582-4130 to notify us of any uh, of your submission. Staff will be checked this box all throughout the day. The annual town election. Anyone wishing to take out nomination papers for the annual town election should contact the town clerk's office at 978-582-4130, extensions 130 or 131. The town clerk will co coordinate the receipt and drop-off of papers. Tax payments. Tax payments can be mailed to the town's lockbox at the following address. Address to the town of Lunenburg. Department 1260, P.O. Box 986500, Boston, Mass. 02298-6500. For any questions, please contact the Treasurer Collector, Mylene Malari, at 978-582-4130, extension 135, or at M. Malari, M-A-L-L-A-R-I, at lunenbergonline.com. Mass Development has postponed the operations for their April Regional Household Hazardous Products Collection Center. The next collection day will be May 6th and May 9th, 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. The Devlin's Household Hazardous website and voicemail are updated. Please make sure you visit their, their site for more information. An update from Unitil. The following steps have been taken by Unitil to share what they are doing to protect the health and safety of their customers as well as their employees. Disconnections have been suspended. All residential and commercial service disconnections have been suspended indefinitely. The customer service representatives are standing by to answer questions and can offer a variety of payment solutions if your family or business is experiencing financial hardship as a result of this situation. Please don't hesitate to reach out to them if you are in need. Online tools. They have created an online resource for you regarding the steps they are taking as a company in response to the virus. You can find that resource at unitil.com backslash R dash community backslash COVID-19 dash response dash plan. They also have a number of mobile options through My Unitil to help you manage your energy needs. Social distancing. They have enacted social distancing practices in all offices. Personnel who can work from home have been advised to do so, and they have limited travel and in-person meetings to the greatest extent possible. Field health and safety. Their field technicians have received additional protective supplies in an effort to keep them safe and healthy. Their customer service team and field technicians will ask you important questions about your own health status so they can take appropriate action to ensure the health and safety of all while on your property. Readiness. They recognize that the spread of COVID-19 doesn't change the fact that we would must be ready to respond should a storm or other emergency event impact our system. They're taking steps to ensure field personnel and support staff remain ready to go in the event their response efforts are further tested in this way. Scams. They're continuing to monitor for individuals or groups 
that may try to take advantage of the ongoing crisis for personal gain. They will share news of any customer scams in progress and keep you abreast of activities to watch out for on their scam page, which is unitel.com backsplash be aware. I spoke with the managers at both Walmart and Hannaford's today, and the hours for both establishments are remaining the same. The Hannaford's manager provided the message that they're working hard to keep the shelves stocked, and their maintenance crew is ensuring that their customers and staff remain protected by increasing their sanitizing of the store. Another one of their priorities is to keep their customers and associates informed. Uh, any further updates, we will be updating on the town website as well as town Facebook page. It will be sent to the town-wide email address, which goes out to all employees, all board and committee members, as uh, well as sending updates to the Lunenburg Ledger. And I to hand it off to the superintendent now, Dr. Kate Burnham. Thank you. So first, I'd like to provide some information in response to questions that we have received from both staff and students. The Commissioner of Education has informed us that no school district will be in session beyond the 185th day on the 2019-2020 school calendar. In Lunenburg, that day is June 18th. The Governor has closed schools until April 7th. However, we continue to monitor this situation, and even if the Governor lifts the order, locally we may make a different decision based on our local or regional conditions. At this time, unless the Commission's guidance changes, we have no plans to cancel April School Vacation Week. Currently, we have no decisions regarding cancellation of the senior prom or graduation. The district leadership team has been working since Friday afternoon on several plans for implementation during the closure of schools. The first is addressing concerns of food insecurity. In Lunenburg, there are 274 families, a total of 377 students who are eligible for free and reduced lunch. We will be providing grab-and-go meals for these students. We will be providing lunch and the next day's breakfast daily, Monday through Friday. Our food services director, Nadine Lorenzen, will be contacting families already receiving meal benefits through the school lunch program. She will contact them directly to provide additional information regarding distribution of the grab-and-go meals. We hope to begin distribution Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Families will be provided the details regarding this distribution. Our students have also been receiving Kylie's care kits. These care kits provide food for meals through the weekend. The care kits are discreetly provided to our students through our school nurses' offices. The care kits for distribution this Friday, March 20th, are ready for distribution. Currently, the organization believes they can provide care kits for an additional two weeks. However, they are low on stock. If you would like to make a monetary donation or donate food items, you may bring those donations to 66 Watson Ave in Lemonster. Donations can be dropped off beginning March 22nd. The food items that they are requesting are boxes of macaroni and cheese, cans of chicken noodle soup, Chef Boyardee products, SpaghettiOs and meatballs, juice boxes, individual size boxes of cereal, and single serving oatmeal packets. The other project we've been working on is continuity of learning. We will be posting enrichment learning resources by grade level, K through eight, and by content area, grades nine through 12. These will be posted on the website and available for families to access beginning Friday morning, March 20th. This is not meant to replace daily instruction as per the Commissioner of Education. Rather, these materials are meant to keep students engaged with learning and engaged in maintenance of skills. The only exception to this will be for students in advanced placement courses. AP teachers will continue to deliver the curriculum so that students will be prepared for the AP exams this spring. That is assuming that the College Board does not postpone the tests. These assignments that AP students will be provided will not be graded. Additionally, the College Board has already canceled the May SAT tests. 
The Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is compiling resources for us to use during the school closure. These resources will be vetted by the department. Additionally, WGBH is making all curriculum materials accessible to educators at no cost. They will also be dedicating a portion of their broadcast hours to education. This will help students and families who do not have access to the internet to also experience this continuity of learning during the closure. Starting Monday, Comcast will offer two months of free internet service to new customers and increase internet speeds for existing cu customers. Internet Essentials is free to new customers who are low income families. New customers will receive 60 days of complimentary Internet Essentials service, which is normally available to all qualified low-income households for $9.95 per month. Additionally, for all new and existing Internet Essentials customers, the speed of the program's Internet service was increased. That increase will go into effect for no additional fee, and it will become the new base speed for the program going forward. Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots across the country will be available to anyone who needs them for free, including non-Xfinity internet subscribers. For a map of Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots, you can visit www.xfinity.com slash Wi-Fi. Once at a hotspot, consumers should select the Xfinity Wi-Fi network name in the list of available hotspots and then launch a browser. Teachers and service providers will be accessible to families and students via email daily, Monday through Friday, during regular school hours. We're also exploring other platforms that teachers can use to engage with their students. We are working on a way that students can access their counselors, the school social worker, or school psychologists on a one-to-one -one, uh, platform in order to maintain student confidentiality. More details will follow. The guidance from the Department of Ed is that services included in an IEP are suspended while school is closed. We are exploring a platform that will allow us to continue to hold IEP meetings virtually while school is closed. Any meetings scheduled this week will be rescheduled once we have the platform to host meetings. Additional information for families will be coming from our Director of Student Services, Juliana Hanscom. With regards to facilities, all school buildings are closed to the public, including all school fields and school playgrounds. We have also been working to explore ways to ensure that our hourly staff will not go without an income. We will be communicating with groups regarding what this might look like. Communications. We will continue to push information out to staff, students, and families via email and automated calls. All communications that are pushed out will also be posted on our district website. This is a very fluid and at times rapidly changing situation. We will do our best to get you any new information as to how we are operating and supporting learning while our schools are closed as quickly as we can. We appreciate your patience as we navigate uncharted territory and make decisions based on the information we have at the time. There will also be an FAQ sheet posted later this evening and there will be a follow-up communication to staff and families later this evening. I'll turn it over to Chief Marino. Thank you, Dr. Burnham. Uh, the police department will take the following steps to reduce officer citizen exposure uh, to the COVID-19 virus while still prioritizing protection of life and property and quality of life. Uh, reporting crime. <coughs> Reporting crime uh, has not changed. Citizens are always encouraged to report crime immediately. If you see something, say something. For emergencies and crimes in process, please call 911. Again, that's for emergencies and crimes in process. For all other police-related services, please call the main number, 978-582-4531. Uh, for patrol, the police follow standard operating procedures when responding to emergency calls. The police will, at a minimum, respond to all life 
uh, saving emergencies, serious crimes in progress, or recently occurred crimes, crimes against persons, vehicle collisions involving injuries or fatalities, death investigations, and other responses as staff levels allow. The front door at the police station, at the public safety building, uh, will be locked if the desk is, is not manned. Uh, the desk is typically manned between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., but not on weekends. Citizens will be able to access dispatch via the phone at the front door of the public safety building. Citizens will be let into the lobby of the public safety building if an emergency exists. Otherwise, they will be asked to wait by the front door until an officer arrives to greet them. Officers will let citizens from the uh, will greet citizens from the front desk via or let them in via an electric lock on the door and access the complaint from behind the glass. Telephone reporting of minor crimes may be taken by officers. Dispatchers will be asked to obtain caller information, including but not limited to telephone numbers, and pass that information to the on-duty officers. Uh, telephone interviews in these cases are encouraged. In response to these crime scenes will be discretionary. In custody arrests will be processed by a clerk magistrate via video arraignment. Arrestees held will be transported to the county jail by the Worcester County Sheriff's Office and until at least Wednesday of this week, something that is subject to change. Uh, criminal investigations um, section, the detective sergeant and school resource officer will be reassigned if necessary to supplement patrol needs while maintaining capability to investigate all serious crimes against persons and maintain evidence crime scene processing as needed for major crimes against persons. Uh, resume in investigations of other crimes as staffing levels allow. Uh, assignments for the officers, all sworn personnel, regardless of rank, are subject to temporary reassignment to mission critical components if the availability, availability of the workforce fo declines. Work schedules and shift hours will change to meet needs and maintain operational effectiveness. Uh, mitigation, the police will keep the law enforcement workplace as disease-free as possible by increasing the cleaning of the police facilities and reducing the possibility of having sick or exposed persons contaminating the work area and thus exposing other personnel to COVID-19 virus. The police department will increase the cleaning schedule from two days per week to three. All police vehicles are equipped with medical supplies such as oxygen, bandages, gauze, etc., and personal protection equipment goggles, gloves, Tyvek suits, N95 masks, as well as hand sanitizer. There will be notices posted at the lobby encouraging visitors to disclose any symptoms of uh, COVID-19. Visitors, visitors who show signs of illness or, or are sick will not, be will not be allowed into the public safety building unless it's an emergency. If an, if an in-custody arrest suspect exhibits flu-like symptoms, officers will don pr protective gear. Bail arrangements will need a, a re, uh, immediately if release is possible. Visitors will be encouraged to wash their hands using alcohol-based sanitizer or soap and water for at least 20 seconds upon entering the building. Uh, employees, employees will be asked to constantly monitor themselves for signs of illness and symptoms, uh, if symptoms exist or sick will be required to stay home until they no longer have a fever without the use of fever reducers and symptoms have subsided. Employees will be asked to wash their hands with soap and water for approximately 20 seconds upon entering the building. Vehicle steering wheels, microphones, handheld radar units, door handles, shift levers, phones, desks, computer, keyboards, and mouses, work tools, and equipment will be sanitized at shift change with a disinfectant provided by the department. License to carry applications. The Lunenburg Police Department will continue to process LTC and FID applications. We have implemented a few changes in order to continue our efforts to keep citizens and first responders safe from COVID-19. Please be aware of the following requirements. Print and fill out both the application and mandatory waiver at home prior to your appointment. Please do not come into the lobby to get a copy of the application. Both forms are available on the town website at www.lunenburgmass.gov um, backslash files and docs. You can go on the lunenburgmass.gov uh, website, just navigate to the police department and click on uh, documents. 
you can find the application for the LTC or FID on that website and print it up. If you cannot do that because you don't have access to the internet or to a printer, uh, please call us and we will get one to you through the uh, snail mail or some other method. Um, the, again, the number at the police station is 978-582-4531 for regular business. You'll, as the application uh, will state on the front, you call that number to schedule an appointment as well. Please disclose if you have any potential COVID-19 symptoms, including fever, cough, and shortness of breath, or if you have traveled at all within the last 14 days prior to coming in to the station with your application. For renewals, appointments will be scheduled closer to the expiration date in order to limit the need for citizens to come to the station during the state of emergency. For new applications, applicants will have the option to apply after April 7th when feasible. Now, this is strictly optional. Applicants will still have the option of obtaining a firearms license at their request. Applicants will be asked to wear a mask while being fingerprinted. Uh, the Lunenburg Police Department will assist the Department of Health or local Board of Health in enforcing the governor's order pursuant to Chapter 631 of the Acts of 1950, which prohibits gatherings of more than 25 people without limitation. Uh, community, civic, public, leisure, faith-based events, sporting events, and spectator concerts, uh, conventions, fundraisers, parades, fairs, festivals, and other similar events that brings together 25 or more persons in a single room or a single space at the same time in a venue such as an auditorium, stadium, arena, large conference room, meeting hall, theater, gymnasium, fitness center, private club, or any other confined indoor or outdoor space, or on the premises, or uh, outdoor space, or uh, the, the on-premises consumption of food or drink at any restaurant, bar, or establishment that offers such until April 5th, 2020, and that's at noontime on that date. And uh, as was already said by the superintendent of schools, this is an ongoing fluid situation. These things change by the hour. Uh, we're meeting regularly um, to try to keep you updated. If you have any questions at all, of course, uh, even after uh, hours or during the weekends, you can always email me at jmarino at lunenburgonline.com. Thank you. It's uh, to you, uh, Jim. Good afternoon. Uh, as health agents for the Lunarburg Board of Health, the Neshoba Board of Health will be monitoring the websites of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and Centers for Disease Control so that we have the most up-to-date information so that we can advise people who call and email with their questions. Please feel free to do that at our office in air at 978-772-3335 and my extensions 305. Again, our goal is to be able to help you through some of the questions that you may find on those websites. One of the things I wanted to mention is that our public health nurse will be monitoring the disease surveillance system of the state called MAVEN. Um, we are the, uh, we, we actually contact people who have been, either have communicable disease or have been exposed. She will be checking that website every day and will give me regular updates so I can provide those to the towns. There, you, I'm sure you've heard in the news, they talk about cases of COVID-19. You hear either confirmed or presumptive. If you're presumptive positive, that means the state lab, or I would imagine now with the new testing labs that are coming on, on board, that you've been tested positive for the virus. Um, a confirmed case means that that lab has sent the uh, for follow-up and confirmation to the CDC. Uh, from the Board of Health's perspective, uh, whether you're confirmed or presumptive positive, we're going to approach uh, the situation as if you're testing positive for that virus. Uh, to that end, uh, our public health nurse will contact those people who are presumptive positives here in town uh, to provide you with information on isolation if you're presumptive positive. And if you're a close contact with somebody who is a presumptive positive or confirmed case to discuss the requirements of quarantine um, as required by state law. Uh, in the in close contact for the basis of Department of Public Health means having had contact with somebody within six feet for at least 15 minutes or more. Um, she will explain uh, what both isolation and quarantine mean 
for what for it is you need to do um, and she'll let you know what those time frames are for you to be on those isolations and or quarantines as you may have heard the testing uh, guidelines have changed as of Friday the state lab is doing a certain portion of the testing and there are private labs that are now opening up to do the testing um, please contact your private your, your private physician um, to determine whether it is that you need that testing the guides and guidelines again have changed um, and they should be familiar with those please don't just go to your physician's office or to the hospital uh, as they may not be uh, set up to do the actual uh, nasal swabbing that's required the office process for the Neshoba Associated Boards of Health is that we are open, uh, not open to the public. We have a box out front for those who want to drop off Sharps containers, and we have a box set out there for those who need to drop off paperwork. We are available by phone and email, so feel free to call. Again, the office number is 978-772-3335, and if you hit zero, the administrative assistant can direct you to the right party. Thank you. Chief Sullivan. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, as Chief Marino said, uh, fire and emergency medical services like PD, uh, we are open for business. If you call 911, we will come. Uh, our personnel have had extra training in assessing patients that may be sick. We're carrying extra protective equipment in the ambulances. There are extra procedures in place for cleaning both at the station and in the vehicles. We ask that if you did call 911 because you were ill, Please inform them if you have flu symptoms or and that you've been out of the country or been in potential contact with somebody that may have the coronavirus so we can, again, be prepared for that. Understand uh, with a lot of the hospitals, it's an evolving situation for them as well and being in contact with some of the emergency rooms. If you come to the hospital just to be looking to get tested and your symptoms are very mild, you may be told to go home and recuperate there. Uh, so again, keep that in mind. Like I said, they cannot test everybody, uh, but please make people aware. But the message I would want to get out is if you call for help, we will be coming. We have the people that we always have, and they are ready to go. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for coming today. As anybody can see, that is a, a wealth of information and it's coming at lightning speed and as you can imagine for many of their departments is rather overwhelming to redesign all these systems on the fly as things are changing so i want to thank them all for their their hard work and their dedication to the town and to their departments and to their employees and the citizens of lunenburg and also for their cooperation in, in bringing all this to everybody as it happens uh, I should announce that there's the state, I think, uh, late last week uh, began a 211 hotline for COVID-19, and that is designed to uh, provide information, resources, and referrals in multiple language, and it's an expansion of the increased investment and resources directed toward that uh, state-supported telephone hotline. So you can get information from calling that. It's about the disease uh, and the virus itself. Uh, lastly, we will try to provide these updates, uh, maybe not in this format, although as things change in greatly, we will try to do these from time to time as we see fit, but obviously we'll be updating all the resources that I gave out earlier from all the websites uh, and Facebook pages and all the other social media that, that we have in town to be able to get to that, spread the word uh, as you hear things. I would please caution people that if you don't know if something is true, whether it's from the town or whether it's from state or just in general, please be careful what you post. The last thing we want is false information getting out there. That has been critical to all of us. Uh, and needless to say that uh, while public safety obviously is our primary focus right now, uh, not only in Lunenburg, but worldwide, and no doubt this will put a strain on all the systems and individuals and their families as we go through this. Case numbers, because as the testing increases, case numbers will obviously increase. We ask people not to panic, not to, uh, as best they can, not to feel overly anxious, but to just take the precautions that are being done and, and check on friends and neighbors, uh, both locally and abroad. Uh, it's not just a phrase that I like to use. It really is true, and it's probably no more true than now that, that we, more than ever, are in this together 
as a, as a community, as a state, as a country, as a global community. And the only way we're going to get through this is really together. So I ask everybody for their cooperation. You have email addresses and, and phone numbers on the Lunarburg website. Again, lunarburgma.gov. You can email anybody. The, the phone line to town hall on weekdays will be monitored. You know, the Board of Selectmen, myself, T. Alonzo at lunenburgonline.com, but everybody's email address and all the different departments is available and everybody's monitoring them. So we want to make sure that we keep information straight and we keep everybody informed. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody here for all the information they shared, and I ask everyone to please uh, stay safe and keep each other safe. Thank you.